Hello again, Lewis, and welcome Rowling, who are now listening to Beetle Boy with me as well. Uh, nice to have you along. I uh, hope everybody had a lovely half term and enjoyed some of the sunshine. And we better get on with the book then, because things are starting to happen. It's chapter eight, The Oath. Where are we going, Bertolt asked nervously, as Darkus pulled himself up onto the shed roof. You'll see, Darkus said. Virginia, give him a leg up. Bertolt scrambled up onto the roof of the shed, squealing when his shoe got stuck in the guttering. This way, Darkus said, running lightly along to the wall and pulling himself up. He sat on top, dangling his legs and offered Bertolt his hand. He'd spent the day at school pretending to feel ill. Uncle Max had said he could have a second day off to make their story more believable, but Darkus had wanted to go back. He was desperate to see Bertolt and Virginia. His only worry was being spotted by Pickering and Humphrey on his way to school. So he'd borrowed Uncle Max's bobble hat and a long scarf from the coat stand in the hall and covered his head and face. He checked the coast was clear before slipping out onto the street and did his best impression of one of the clones hunching his shoulders and strutting to school. At the end of school, he'd invited Virginia and Bertolt to come back to Uncle Max's, keeping the reasons as mysterious as he could. He was worried that if he told them the truth, they'd laugh at him, or worse, pity him for making up such a crazy story. He needed them to see for themselves and then perhaps they'd help him. I can't believe you persuaded me to do this, Bertolt grumbled, slowly pulling himself along the roof on his bottom, trying not to look down. Darkus grabbed his arm and whicked him up on the wall. He pointed down to the yard next door. Take a look at that. Bertolt's mouth dropped open. What is it? Virginia asked, pulling herself up onto the other side of Darkus. Holy guacamole, would you look at that? I call it the Furniture Forest, Darkus said grandly. What are you, a poet? Virginia laughed, throwing her legs over the wall. Come on, what are you waiting for? Virginia, Bertolt said, that's trespassing. Whoops, said Virginia, smiling at Bertolt as she let go of the wall and dropped down on top of a wardrobe. Follow me. Darkus swung himself so that his feet hit the vertical sofa and he slid down the cushion, disappearing into the warren. He waited under the table for Virginia and Bertolt, who soon scrambled in and sat with him in a huddle. I'm not sure this is a very good idea, Bertolt whispered, looking around nervously. We don't know who lives here. I do, Darkus said. Are they friendly? Bertolt asked hopefully. Not exactly. Darkus changed the subject. Look, I've brought you here because I need your help. Is it to do with your dad? Virginia asked. Darkus nodded. I knew it. Some stuff has happened and I don't know what it all means yet, but I think my dad's disappearance has something to do with this. He slid the backpack off his back and pulled out Baxter's jam jar. What is that? Bertolt exclaimed, leaning forward. Whoa, where'd you get a rhinoceros beetle that big? Virginia knelt and grabbed the jar from Darkus, lifting it up to eye level. He's magnificent. How do you know that? Know what? Virginia tapped the glass lightly with her fingertip. The Baxter's a rhinoceros beetle. Darkus was impressed. I know lots of things, Virginia smiled, but I also have three brothers and Sean is big into bugs. He's got two stick insects, a tarantula and a whole shelf of DVDs about insects. He'd suck a bucket full of lemons to get his hands on a beetle this big. Darkus took the jar back from her and unscrewed the lid. I found him the day before yesterday. He tipped the jar gently. Everybody, meet Baxter, he said as the rhinoceros beetle crawled out of the jar and onto his hand. Baxter, this is Bertolt and this is Virginia. Does it bite? Bertolt asked, transfixed. Don't be an idiot, Virginia shoved him. Rhinoceros beetles eat fruit and tree sap. Well, I don't know that, do I? Bertolt huffed. He looked at Darkus. I don't understand. What's the beetle got to do with your dad's disappearance? Yesterday I went to the museum and saw the room he disappeared from. No way, Virginia's eyes grew wide. Did you find any clues? The police already did a thorough search. Bertolt looked over his glasses at her disapprovingly. Actually, yes, I did. Darkus stroked his finger over Baxter's thorax. Or rather, Baxter did. The beetle found a clue. Virginia looked sceptical. Darkus described how he'd found Baxter and then told them about the trip to the museum. I wasn't ill yesterday, Darkus said. Uncle Max made that up. He described the collection room full of beetles and the mystery of the empty drawers, finding his father's glasses and the arrival of Lucretia Cutter. It turns out the room Dad disappeared from is the Cutter Coleoptera collection room. You saw her, Bertolt asked, amazed. The actual Lucretia Cutter? Darkus nodded. I saw her twice, but I'll get to that bit in a minute. Twice? Bertolt squeaked. Who's Lucretia Cutter? Virginia asked. I don't know, Darker shrugged. She's rich, I know that. She's got the most amazing car and she's big into beetles. Uncle Max thinks she's got something to do with Dad's disappearance. 
You've never heard of Lucretia Cutter, Bertolt asked, astonished. Darks and Virginia shook their heads. The House of Cutter is one of the biggest fashion brands in the world. Lucretia Cutter is known as the mad scientist of fashion, Bertolt said. She's a genius and a powerful businesswoman. They stared blankly back at him. You must have seen the winged scarab logo on handbags and stuff. He drew a circle in the air with his fingers. How come you know about fashion, Darkus asked, surprised. My mum reads the magazines, Bertolt blushed. So what has this fashion designer got to do with beetles, Virginia wondered, or your dad for that matter? Last season she made a suit of armour from spider silk for the ghost of Joan of Arc, Bertolt said. Maybe she wants to make a dress out of beetles. Gruesome, Virginia pulled a face. A dress made of insects. I can't believe you saw her, Bertolt said to Darker. She's hardly ever seen out, not since her accident. She doesn't even attend her own shows. Accident? Well, she was in a terrible car crash about a year ago. Bertolt's high-pitched voice dipped into dramatic whisper. The papers said she would never walk again. She had sticks when I saw her, Darker said. She moved weirdly, but she can walk. They say she almost died, Bertolt added. Yeah, well, you can't always believe anything written in the papers, Bertolt said bitterly. Anyway, Uncle Max said she's bad news. Bertolt looked dismayed. Why? I'm not sure. I'm guessing she must know Dad because Uncle Max told me Dad used to be a beetle expert. But listen, there's more. Darkus went on to describe hearing the neighbours arguing, discovering furniture forest, climbing the tree and finding the mountain of cups full of beetles, then being captured. Bertolt looked nervous as he told of his escape and Lucretia Cutter's visit and seeing the girl get out of the car and drop her card. Darkus left out the bit about her blowing a kiss. It was too embarrassing and he knew Virginia would tease him. And if you don't believe me, he pulled out a white rectangle of card out of his pocket and held it out. This is it. Bertolt took the card and read, Novak Cutter, actress, Towering Heights, Regent's Park, London. He looked up. That's a fancy address. Hang on, Virginia held her hands up. This is getting crazy. You're telling me that Baxter flew in and helped you like some kind of super beetle and made the other beetles gnaw through the rope so you could escape? Yes, Darkus frowned. He could tell Virginia didn't believe him. Look, I need your help. I feel like I'm doing a dot-to-dot -dot puzzle. Only there's a whole lot of dots and no numbers and I can't work out how they're connected. Look, I get there's a lot going on, but a beetle with superpowers? Virginia pursed her lips and raised her eyebrows. You're kidding me. I know it sounds like I made it up, but this is not a joke. Darker shook his head. I can't talk to anyone else about it. Uncle Max is a bit weird about Baxter already, and he'd kill me if he knew what happened last night. He might make me give Baxter away. He looked from Virginia to Bertolt. I need you to believe me. That's why I brought you here, to show you. Show us what? Virginia asked. Baxter. Darkus held out his hand as far as possible. Time to do your stuff. Fly to my shoulder. The, beat as a, the beetles a litra lifted and his soft wings unfurled, vibrating as he jumped into the air, flew the short distance to Darkus's shoulder and landed, turning around and settling in his favourite spot. Bertolt's and Virginia's faces were a picture of shock. How did you do that? Bertolt squeaked, astonished. Darkus shrugged. I didn't do anything. Do it again, Virginia said, her low voice insistent. No, get Baxter to do something else. Do something harder. Baxter, Darkus whispered, fly up, do a loop. His fingers traced the movement in the air and then land on Virginia's hand. He reached over and took her hand, opening it and holding her palm up. OK, go. Baxter leapt into the air, zooming upside down in a circle before coming to land on Virginia's palm. Ah, no way, she shrieked with delight. Shh, Darkus scolded. And you say there are more of those beetles up there, Bertolt pointed at the Emporium. They're not all like Baxter, Darker said, but yes, there are hundreds, maybe even thousands of different beetles up there. This is amazing, Virginia said, staring down at the rhinoceros beetle on her hand. Now do you believe me? Darkus asked, enjoying himself. You betcha. Virginia looked at him, an excited spark in her eyes. She held out her hand in front of Darkus's shoulder so Baxter could clamber back. So, will you help me? Virginia nodded. Darkus looked at Bertolt. And you? He pushed his glasses up his nose and swallowed nervously. I'll do my best. So, what's your pan? Virginia asked. Lucretia Cutter wants the beetles up in that room, Darkus said. And if she gets her hands on them, she'll kill them. I heard her say so. Baxter's elytra flickered open and then closed. It's OK, Baxter. We're not going to let that happen. He looked at Virginia. I don't know much about those beetles, but if any of them are like Baxter, then they're special and should be studied, not killed. Darkus felt himself getting angry. We need to find out more about those beetles. Where did they come from? Why does Lucretia Cutter want them? And most importantly, we need to find out how she knows my dad. 
and if there's any link between these beetles and whatever Dad was working on. An image of a folder under his uncle's arm flashed into his head. I think it might be something called the Faber Project. I wish you could hear how crazy you sound right now, Virginia chuckled. This is not funny, Darkus found himself shouting. Shh, Bertolt looked alarmed. Whoa, calm down, I get it. Virginia held her hands up. We're on a beetle preservation mission, fighting against an evil tycoon from the fashion industry who may or may not have kidnapped your dad for some reason to do with beetles that we don't know yet. She smiled. I'm in. I was just saying it sounded crazy. She leant back and grinned. But crazy's cool. Bertolt reached over and put his hand on Darkus's arm. I'll do everything I can to help you find your dad, Darkus, he said earnestly. Thanks. Darkus felt suddenly deflated. His head had been spinning ever since he'd visited the museum, and now that he'd finally emptied the contents of it to Virginia and Bertolt, he could hear how strange it sounded. Sorry for shouting. Ah, oh, it's okay, Virginia gently punched his arm. I don't really have a plan, he admitted, but I can't let Lucretia Cutter go in there and murder all those beetles. Let's make an oath, Virginia held her hand out. An oath? I, Virginia Wallace, solemnly do swear to help Darkus Cuttle in his mission to find his father and save the Beatles. Bertolt put his hand flat on top of Virginia's. I, Bertolt Roberts, solemnly do swear to help Darkus Cuttle in his mission to find his father and save the Beatles. Darkus did the same. I, Darkus Cuttle, solemnly do swear that I will not rest until I've found my dad and the Beatles are safe. Baxter zoomed down and landed on the back of Darkus's hand. They looked at each other and then at the rhinoceros beetle. There, Virginia said, we've made an oath. Now it's got to happen.